Hi, my name is Jan Benham, founder and CEO of The Aroma Shop and Jan Benham's Cosmetics. Today I'm going to talk about mica, what it is and how it is used. So what is mica? Mica adds non-toxic colour, shine and sparkle to soaps, shampoos, lip balms, lipsticks, lotions, creams, soaps and mineral makeup. Mica is a non-toxic occurring naturally from the minerals muscovite and silicate. So this is a big chunk of mica here that I have sitting in my garden all the time. And they take the mica and then they grind it down into various particle sizes. So before we go any further, I just want to talk about the mining of mica. So around 60% of the world's mica is sourced in India. A huge part of this is mined in socially and economically challenged regions with a high incidence of child labour, corruption in the supply chain and poor working conditions. As a result of this information, we source our mica that we know has only been um, sourced ethically in an environmentally process and not using child labour. So going back to the different various uh, particle sizes. So one of the smallest particle sizes is under 10, what they call 10 UM. And this is surrogate mica here. There's been nothing added, no colorants, no nothing. And what they do is, this is used primarily because it's so fine particle size, it's used mainly in mineral makeup and in mineral veils, foundations, mineral veils, anything where you want a nice silky feel on the skin. So we tend to use our Cerakote Mica in our mineral makeup and also as a filler as well. So we're going to go slow, work our way slowly up the different um, particle sizes and what each one is used for. So the next size up that we use is something called Balanced Micas and Satin Pearl Mica. And these micas are less than 15 UM. Now Balanced Micas basically are all white appearing micas but have a unique hue. So they'll have um, say a golden hue or a red hue or green or violet or blue. And these Balanced Micas are also known as interference colours. And they have a very small particle size and so they leave a pleasantly powdery, dry and soft feeling on the skin. Now where we use these balance micas is often is in balance, is in corrections. So mineral correctors like a violet corrector to help correct dark colour underneath your eyes or to add, a, a, to correct any of the hues in your face that you wish if you've got too yellow a shade on your skin or too red to balance out the skin. So a green balance mica would be very useful on people with rosacea and reddened patches on your skin. So they'd use a little bit that's mixed into a powder base so it can stick to the skin. So that's balance micas. The satin pearl mica that we use is a white powdery. Again, it's very silky soft and we often we use that in our foundations, especially in our mineral foundation so beautiful and silky and it adds a beautiful hue to the foundation as well and then we go up and so then we have what they call silk and gold and ultra silk micas so the silk and gold is kind of like a warm off-white with a golden sheen in a dry powder form these are both by the way around 40 um particle size i'm just going to go down the screen here And the other mica is Ultra Silk, and we often use that as one in our base to help stick um, the, the larger particle size micas on the, into the eyeshadow onto our eyelids. So those are two that are a little bit larger particle size than the Satin Pearl. And then we go to the most useful size, which is what they call 60 UM. And here we have the fine gold mica that is 60 UM. Now you can see the difference here, it's, it's shiny now but it's not sparkly. Now if we compare it to the 24 karat gold which is 150 UM, 
you can see that has a lot more sparkle to it. So it's a larger particle size. It has the same oxide on the top with a little bit of titanium dioxide, which gives it its shine. But because of the larger particle size, it leaves a sparkle effect as well. Now the 60 UM is the most useful size because it sticks easier than a larger particle size. Now I'm going to take for example the largest one, which is, this is um, Sparkle Pearl Mica, and this is 500 UM. And this is pretty well useless to use as an eyeshadow. If you put this even in with a base, it will tend to be too thick, too big a particle, and it won't stick. So it's nice and glittery, but it really is more, acts more like glitter than something like the 60 UM or even the 150, which can still be used in makeup. So the most useful one, these are all here, they're all 60 UM and they, I'm going to just explain how they are used in makeup. So bikers by themselves are not used but alone as a makeup. So if you put, um, say, the peachy red mica into a lipstick base to make a lipstick, it will look very pretty in the lipstick tube, but it wouldn't leave a red lip on, on your lips, a redness on your lips. So it has to be mixed with other uh, colorants, such as red oxides are very sticky. Titanium dioxide or zinc is very sticky. Now, for example, this lipstick is basically a mica-based lipstick and um, it's made with the, cinnamon, uh, the cinnabar mica and also true red mica and it's mixed with a little bit of red oxide and zinc oxide in order to be able to give, impart that colour to the lips. So it's a beautiful, um, I call it cinnamon girl uh, lipstick and also on this one I've Change the name to Coco La Creme because I like to play with names. So this is Cinnabar Mica and True Red Mica mixed with Zinc Oxide and Red Oxide. On the eyes to make these eyeshadows which are all mica based, the micas are mixed and they're mixed with uh, are mixed together whatever colours you want to get obtain and then they are mixed with what I call easy press eyeshadow which is a base which is a base make, made from zinc oxide magnesium stearate and kaolin clay among other ingredients all natural that basically are sticky so they st adding a little bit of that to the mica that you want the colour it for will make the eyeshadow stick to your eyelids. So in your mineral makeup, I mean this is with Patagonian Lou and this is mixed with the base in order that it sticks onto the eyelid and we've got all various different hues here for example in a pressed eyeshadow. We even use these, um, the 60 UM in our, um, sometimes in our foundation. So for example, I often use the Pearl Nude Mica, the Imperial Topaz and the Imperial Citrine, which are both matte micas. There's no, there's no um, shine to them whatsoever. There's a bit of shine to the Pearl Nude, but not to the others. And then we make, among with other colorants, we make then the, found our foundations with those. So we do add micas to our foundations. So the 60 UM is what you are looking for if you want to make use the micas to make lipsticks, eyeshadows, blushes, and to add to your foundations. And of course, if you want to use bases, then you need to use the satin pearl, the ultra silk, the cerakote mica in order to make the mineral veils. So now we get a little bit higher. So we already discussed um, the 24 karat gold is um, 150 UM and we also use something called the Ultra Shimmer Mica which has a nice sparkle to it and the 150 you can still use in lipsticks and in eyeshadows. They just add a little bit more glitter and, and uh, shine to your, to your makeup. And then we have something called the Sparks. Now this is a type of, the way they make these colorants is 
they they get the powder and then they layer it with the colors so they often use colors such as FC and D dyes they use they can use carmine they can use oxides we only have our micas that have added or had oxides added not the FC and D dyes so that they are 100% natural and free from petrochemicals but what they do they layer them and with that, they can get very interesting results. For example, the balanced micas. But with the gold sparks, what they have is a very glittery, um, this is the gold, this is the spark here. So this is the gold spark, and this is layered, and it's got a little bit of yellow oxide in. And what it does when it's added to makeup, it's quite a high, it's 200 UM, but it adds a real sparkling effect to your makeup, and it gives a kind of glamorous look. So adding a touch of that, it, it got that beautiful hint, hue of gold in it with the spark with it. So I would call these the sparks and I carry three colors, the red sparks, golden sparks and copper sparks. And then last but not least, I did uh, lead to this was the 500 UM. And where I tend to use this a lot is, in, is as a decoration for soaps. So for example, I make soap cakes. This is a, a natural, uh, naturally colored with carrot root. And I'll put a little bit of white um, um, decoration on top. And then I will literally shake the sparks, not the sparks, the sparkle pearl on top of that to give a frosting effect. That's somehow how you can use uh, these in your um, soap. Now, if you wish to add colorants to soap, the micas to soap to, to give some color. The 60 UM work quite well as well. Uh, for example, I use peachy red quite often in my soap. You don't need to use a lot. To one kilogram or two pounds of soap base, you don't need to add more than 10 grams of mica. Another mica that works very well in soap is the amethyst mica. And that gives a lovely, a lovely colorant to the um, to the soap. And I'm talking about cold process soap here, but you could use them in the other forms of soap making as well. So you can play a lot with adding these colorants. And of course, if you want more of a sparkly soap, then you would add a lot of sparkles, like the 24 karat gold or the sparkle pearl. So I do hope you found it, this useful tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Otherwise, have a great day wherever you may be, and it's bye for now.